Hey guys, this is Patty B within the hauler. I got another firearm I'd like to share with y'all. This is the DS Arms SA58 FN FAL clone, chambered in 762 NATO. Give you a good look here. We'll go ahead and clear it. And clear. The uh, SA58 is a gas operated tilting bolt, short stroke gas piston a semi-automatic battle rifle made in the good old U.S. of A. You know, back in the day, DS Arms bought uh, machining and tools and extra parts from Steyr to build clones of the Austrian STG-58, their version of the FAL here in, uh, here in the States. So I'm not going to go over the uh, history of the FAL too much because that's just way too long. And you know, there's people that know far better than me. If you want history on the FAL, I would suggest uh, going to the YouTube channels Forgotten Weapons and Mishigo because they've forgotten more about the FAL than I know. But uh, the short history is, you know, they call it the right arm of the free world because during the Cold War, uh, you know, the vast majority of countries uh, adopted this and this is what they had to uh, keep the Russian bear at bay. Yeah, the, uh, some people adopted the HKG-3 style rifles, and the U.S., of course, had the uh, M14, but the vast majority carried some copy of this. So we'll go over the features on this real quick. We'll start back here. You've got a uh, polymer furniture, a little rubber butt plate. You've got your uh, sling attachment. You've got this really uh, raked angle uh, pistol grip, which the FAL is known for. Takedown lever. Safety. Of course, your trigger. Uh, magazines typically 20 rounders and they're rock and lock similar to an AK this is your magazine release push that and there you go and there's your charging handle which is non reciprocating I'll go ahead and double check we're still clear and uh, this is your bolt release slash bolt catch so you're on an empty mag you pull it down to uh, slam the bolt forward and if you want to lock it you just push up and there you go, you've locked your bolt to the rear. Uh, like I said, charging handle, non-reciprocating. We've got a polymer handguard out front. This right here is your gas block, which is adjustable, um, which you know a lot of rifles, especially back then, didn't have a uh, so easily user adjustable gas block, which maybe it's a good thing, maybe not, because I guess, you know, if you bump it, you could knock it out of a, you could rotate it and you know, turn your gas higher or lower than you wanted. You got a front side here, which is, uh, adjustable for elevation, sling attachment, and your flash hider. Come back, give you a look at this side. Here's your rear sight, just a peep, which is adjustable out to, I guess that's 600. But also via these screws is windage adjustable at the rear. You've got your uh, dust cover here, which if you take it apart, you can actually slide out and remove. I'll give you a look at this side. We'll uh, do the takedown real fast. So you've got your takedown lever, push it up, and she just breaks in half. You've got your little rat tail, pull her out, and there's your bolt and carrier. As you can see, you don't see any locking lugs up front because it's a tilting bolt design. This is actually where it locks into battery. It locks in, and then the short stroke gas piston hits it right here, knocks it back, allows the locking lug to tilt up, and goes into its action. The uh, rat tail here goes into this little spot here and the recoil springs in here. So it pushes against the recoil spring and it slams it back into battery. So kind of different, you know, they don't really see too many tilting, tilting bolt actions anymore. Everything uh, seems to be rotating, but uh, still a pretty proven design. All right, back together. The trigger on it, it's a little heavy and it stacks a little, but for what it is, not too bad. So I just picked this up last night. I put five rounds through it just to see if it would operate and if the sights were close to being on, which they are. So it shouldn't be a big deal to get this thing going today, which I'm really looking forward to run it through its paces. So, uh, well, hey, enough talk. Let's take this bad boy outside and ring a little steel. All right, we got some PPU uh, 145 grain, 7.62 NATO. We'll uh, take some shots at a uh, hundred.
All right, shoots pretty good, and uh, looks like she's pretty well on. Uh, I had one good whiffer in there, but uh, that's just me. But uh, shooting good. All right, let's take some shots at that 200-yard plate. <laughs> well, I knocked the 200 yard plate down, uh, but uh, yeah, with these sights, you know, uh, that's not that difficult of a shot. Uh, this thing seems like it recoils a little bit less than like an M1A. Um, the trigger is probably not as good. The ergonomics are uh, probably a little better, but this is definitely a lighter and trimmer uh, battle rifle than the M1A. Of course, this has the 18 inch barrel where, uh, you know, factory M1A is uh, what is it, 20, I think, 21, whatever it is. Uh, but this thing's shooting well, shooting well. When I do my part, it's good enough to do its. All right, back inside from shooting the uh, DSA SA58. Go ahead and make sure she's clear and clear. Um, yeah, I put uh, about 200 rounds through it over a two-day period. Um, you know, 200 rounds isn't a whole lot, but uh, you know, ammo prices are pretty high these days, so it's you just can't afford to go out and blast as much as you used to. But I mean, I'll keep on shooting it because uh, man, it was a blast to shoot. It's actually the first FAL or FAL clone, whatever you want to call it, um, that I've ever uh, ever shot, and I uh, I really enjoyed it. The uh, now from DSA, it comes with uh, their polymer mag, which doesn't get great reviews online, but uh, this thing ran fine. As a matter of fact, in the 200 rounds I shot through it, uh, there were zero malfunctions, which is always nice. And then I didn't realize before I bought this that metal surplus mags are all but about unobtainium these days. <laughs> So uh, you can get them, but man, you're gonna pay 50, 60 bucks for a decent steel mag. So I found this other place that uh, I got some mags from, Moses Machine, they got good reviews, um, and these ran flawless for me as well. And uh, I think they fit a little better than the uh, DSA polymer mag, but yeah, she ran like a top. So uh, it was just a lot of fun, you know, shooting the, uh, it's not a true FAL and it's a clone, but it's still pretty cool shooting the old war horse. You can see the uh, scuffed up the Cerakote on this pretty good with the uh, ejection. But uh, yeah, I don't know if I mentioned that before, but uh, the whole rifle, I believe, is Cerakoted in black. But uh, yeah, just a pleasure to take out and shoot today. Um, the sights are pretty nice. I really like the sights. Trigger, eh, it's all right. Um, but you know, for a battle rifle, this thing is, I guess, about as felt as you can get. This thing's eight and a half pounds on my scale. And, uh, you know, maybe because it's only got an 18-inch barrel versus, the, you know, the, uh, was it 21, I think, on the standard FAL. It's just, uh, it's a light, you know, and it moves fairly easy. And uh, just a fun shooting gun, and it was just a pleasure to take out and shoot. Which it better be, because, you know, it's not cheap, spend a lot of money. <laughs> but pretty, pretty nice. It was also nice that ran flawless and that the sights were pretty darn close uh, right out of the box. Which makes it pretty cool, so you're not wasting a bunch of ammo uh, trying to trying to get on paper. Well, there you go, guys. DS Arms SA-58. Y'all have a nice day.